Well, six months a dozen to die, right, Vince? <laughs> what? <laughs> but it's not the jack of all trades that makes Gordon stand out from the crowd. Come on, Count! Come on! It has something to do with Come the fact on. that he's blind. Not partially, but totally blind since birth. When you were young and thinking about being a farmer, mm. did you ever think, hold on a minute, I'm blind, I won't be able to farm? Oh, well, you needn't. Uh, everybody told me that. Betty! <whistles> Come here, here. Come ever on, since here. he was a small Come boy, on. Gordon wanted to be a farmer. So that meant adjusting to all sorts of obstacles. How is it that you just don't go really around well. in circles in the same paddock? Oh, don't worry, I've done that. Uh, I have done that. I, I got lost in a, in a cleared paddy. Eventually, though, through sheer persistence, Gordon overcame the hurdles before him and used them to his advantage. If I hit the, the fence that was 22 feet apart, I'd know that that was the dividing fence between two paddocks. He put cowbells on his cattle to know where they were and learnt to tell if a horse was crook by touching its hair. Now, if that's nice and soft, I say, oh, that's all right. But if that's harsh, then that horse possibly needs worming. Come on, Karen! Come on, Bear! Now, these mares are the four that I have selected for the Melbourne Royal. Once he'd conquered the logistics of farming, Gordon, with the help of his old mate Harry Cameron, then set about entering his beloved Clydesdales in the best shows in the country. The show ribbons, though, will never, according to Gordon, be as important as the horse itself. Come on. He often, on. he'll uh, ask us to yeah. go and catch a horse for him and we'll bring a horse up and uh, he'll uh, put a hand on its neck and start shaking his head and saying, no, sorry, that's, that's the wrong yeah. horse. I wanted Phyllis and she's bigger than this horse or she you know she she has uh, different hocks or something like that local vet robin charman says each time she visits gordon she generally leaves shaking her head in wonder oh he has a, a very well almost intimate relationship with them because they uh, he, he knows each horse um basically intuitively in some ways and in other ways by feel We're down here now in the bush paddock. This was the last, the last country that I cleared. Where are you? Oh, good girl. Now this is her, this is a brown one. Unfortunately, one sense that isn't working as well as his touch is Gordon's hearing. When your hearing goes, your, your radar system is out of, out of action. I mean, have you ever really hurt yourself? Oh, I've had a few busters, but yeah, you get over that. I mean, you, you don't let those things worry you. Whether it be the cancer that Gordon battled recently, or the mild stroke, it's his religious beliefs and outlook on life that keeps him going and provides inspiration for others. And what mystifies me more than anything is people contacting him from all over Australia not only to talk about his horses, but when he was desperately sick with his cancer, they were ringing from all over the place. And every morning, I ask God to just care for me through the day. I don't ask anything or expect any great miracles or anything like that. Is there ever a time when you feel sorry for yourself? No, no, I'm not sorry. No, no I, I'm not. No, I... Um, I wished I could do more uh, for the world. He deserves a medal, doesn't he? Gordon Phillips, an extraordinary Australian.